Good morning and welcome to Spirituality Gone Wild. I am Debbie G. It's time for another cup of grata with a shot of expression and two squirts of reality. Today we have back the beautiful Reverend Angie LaRue, which I cannot wait to bring up. But before I do, you know, it's the end of the week, which actually could mean something. It could not mean anything. Friday doesn't necessarily mean much, except that that's how we do gauge the end of the week. And because of that, I had this TikTok video that popped up and I was like laughing so hard. I thought it was great. So I'm going to share it and we're going to get our vibrations up right this minute. Happy Friday. Okay. All right. Well, I guess now we're here. This is what I like to call, uh, you're not getting it tonight, Patrick. Happy baby pose. Okay, oh dear. Let's just go into child's pose for a little bit now. Oh, that feels good, that one. Let's go into what I like to say, back crack and sack and asana. Just get your hips and tits in there. Keep it up there. Oh, just contemplate all your poor life choices. Inhale, uh, exhale. Oh. oh, my cousin got stabbed in the cheek. Oh my Lord. Oh my gosh, I would give him a call. Let's go into Shavasana. Okay, let's just stay here for a little while. Oh, that's nice, that one. Inhale, exhale. Oh, I kissed my brother in the mouth. Oh, God. Oh, no. If you're feeling like a jammy twat, you can go into crow pose. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that today. Oh, I'm going to puke. End that there. Namaste, fucker. So, namaste. I love that so much. Welcome to the stage. MJ LaRue. Hi, Angie. Hello, everyone. Hi, Debbie. Good morning. Good morning. Child's Welcome back. Pose. Gotta love child's pose and Shavasana. <laughs> Gotta love just her Irish accent. And I was just like, there's something about her that just tickles me pink. And I think it's just her willingness to be funny and goofy and just be herself. You know, I always appreciate that about people, though is that the people that are just willing to let their guard down and be whoever they are, um, to me, is just an extraordinary thing. So, Angie, how are you doing this morning? It, welcome back. It's good morning. Yeah, it's great to be back. I had a, I'm, I'm wondering where the sunshine is. I got up this morning and the birds weren't even singing yet and it's uh, cloudy and I think we have another snowstorm coming in. <sighs> oh, seriously, okay, okay. Ooh. Well, she, everybody, she's in Colorado, and this morning, what I'm excited about with today is this morning, Angie took a really long trek to her office really bright and early uh, for the reason of showing us this amazing bed that she has, and it's gorgeous, and we're going to get really into that and the healing properties of it and how that you can actually go and meet her in person and that kind of thing and talk about crystal. He I want to talk about healing and crystals, too. I have a question for you. Mm. It's on my mind, Angie. Okay. This came up the other day when Steve came over because he's coming to meet, meet you soon. Yes. Yay. And and I brought this up with David Strickle yesterday because I'm really straight up about stuff. And Josie Hernan and I were talking about this. You'll be on her show soon. About the fact that I gained 40 pounds or whatever in the last year. And I'm like... Oh my God. Okay. So we do this video and I see myself cause I don't have this full mirror and I'm like, ah! I'm appalled. I'm appalled. I'm like, what the hell happened to me is okay. Let's go into why is our, why does I'm curious. Like I do my work, Angie hard. Like I'm really where every day I, I see a new aspect of myself that I need to look at. But why holding on? And this isn't just me out there. I literally talk to people all over the place and this is going on. A lot of people holding on to excess something but not understanding where or how or why. What's your vibe on that? Well, you know, I'm hitting the age where, you know, weight is like suddenly on my radar as, as well. And, you know, I can see how if I let my vigilance down for a moment, you know, you know, that third cookie, right? <laughs> I really want that. Yeah, cookie. I don't know that third cookie. <laughs> you know, that is just going to go straight to my hips, you know? Yeah. Um, so there's something about metabolism because I've never 
ever had to worry about weight before. I've always been very thin and very skinny and I'm not anymore. Now I'm kind of normal. Um, there's something about, you know, as we move, you know, into, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, our metabolism changes. So just existing isn't burning as much calories as it used to. And then there's something about the food we're eating, all the steps of processing it goes through, mm -hmm. which um, I, I don't know. I think that goes straight to our hips too. I think I think that's true. I and I, I think metabolism is definitely something to look at. Um, one of the I, I know it is actually, and I also don't have a thyroid at all. So let's talk about you know, the use of crystals with this because I don't have a thyroid. Mm -hmm. I will take um, certain crystals sometimes and just put it right here mm -hmm. on my throat to help my throat chakra and whatnot. Yeah. But that also, I know, does play a part. So how can we maybe use the energy of the crystals to sort of, is there a way to use it to help our metabolism? There is. And the crystal arrays, which I build on um, the organ generator bio bed behind me, those arrays move energy all through our auric field and all through our body. So when the you know, chronic energy or the life force energy in our system is flowing really well, right? We will burn a little bit more calories doing nothing. But if the energy is pulling, getting stagnant, not getting into our feet and our legs because we've been sitting too much, mm -hmm. this is where we start also running into problems. So there's, you know, the, gee, I'm putting on weight issue. There's a lot of components to it. And there's also emotional, psychological, you know, shielding, right? Yeah. Like that. You know, but, but if the problem is just sluggish energy, the energy in the system is slowing down more, crystals can really help to get that going again because they're bringing us back to, you know, a homeostasis to a centered, balanced point where everything is working really well. And then from that kind of new beginning, we can go forward with a lot more ease and grace. I love that. I love that. Are there any crystals in particular that you think are more helpful than others in the respect of metabolism? Yes, there are. And I, and I would have to look them up. Um, the crystal family, crystal and mineral family is a huge, huge family. That's a whopper of a question. I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, that's tens that's of like, thousands. Yeah. But, and yes, there are. There are ones that do that. And if I hadn't known you were going to ask me that, I would have that information right on hand. I didn't tell her I was going to ask her that. Yeah. Nope, I'm flying off the cuff like I always do. And actually, we can, uh, we'll explore that next time you're on. We'll talk about it. Today, let's go ahead and take a really big dive into this bed that's behind you right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make the screen larger if you want to show everybody. Check this out, you guys. This is really cool. So what is everybody looking at here? All right. So this is the organ generator crystal bio bed. And you might have to repeat things I'm going to say because as I move away from the mic, my voice may not carry. Okay. All right. So to start with, it makes out into a huge area. And then these all have slide outs with more that can be put in here. And so, and this goes all the way around the bed. So this makes out into a very large thing to hold the crystal arrays. This is fascinating. So these are trained mm -hmm. crystals and they're actually trained to this work. And so they're going to go in particular configurations around this to form different things. And they'll be crisscrossing the body or, you know, any number of things. There's about 160 different crystal arrays. Mm. Wow. This is awesome. Hey, everybody, are you guys checking this out? This is really neat. All right. What are those crystals that you're holding up? They're beautiful. Yeah, these are quartz crystals. Oh, wow. 
And when I, after I show you guys the bed, we'll come back and we'll talk about the different properties of quartz crystals. So basically, these are collecting energy and shooting it out the points. Uh huh. And wow. we're multiple different types of energies, and we'll talk about that. So is everyone noticing how the room has this effervescent glow of just peacefulness in it? I mean, I'm we're all in our own, wherever you're tuning in from, I'm here in Huntington Beach, and I can feel the energy from this room from here. I mean, Angie, it's crazy. I can't, ah! oh my God, look how rad. <laughs> that is so cool. Are you serious? Oh, wow. Okay, please. What are we looking at? All right. So you're looking at a crystal core that runs all the way down the center. It branches off following the natural lay of the arms, and it branches off again down here following the natural lay of legs, if somebody was laying on here. The ends of this where our hands are at is filled with a puffalite. Can you hear me pretty well? I can hear you wonderfully. I, I This is just audience and I are loving you. All right. So it's filled with a puffalite, which is a very high frequency stone. It moves a lot of energy. And the reason I have a puffalite is because we all, you know, with the computers and electronics, we're always working with our hands a lot. And so I want to give a lot of extra life force energy into, into the hands and into the systems of the hands. Down here where the feet would be, we have um, red calcite and carnelian. Oh. And this has to do with, it has a certain grounding property. It also has to do with blood flow, muscles, bone strength, um, and the types of support we particularly need to have in our feet. And then we move up into this section, and this is orange calcite. And I know you can't really see that. I, I wish I had a, a longer cord on my camera and could bring that up closer. Orange well, calcite has to do with our organs of elimination, our digestive tract, so it's really, you know, and a lot of our life force energy and our mental clarity and all kinds of things come from what's happening in the whole digestive system and the elimination system. So it's giving a lot of support to that. Right in the middle here, we have citrine, which is a happy, happy, joy, joy stone. And we're putting that, you know, right into the solar plexus right here. And so this is really causing a bloom of energy that in the center of the body, which can spread up and down and out and with, a, with a frequency of joy, really. Mm. We move right up here. This area here is rose quartz. Rose quartz has to do with, uh, with our heart, our loving expression into the world, loving ourselves, loving others. Um, it's all about, you know, really connecting from how the divine connects. The divine loves all. Right. Mm -hmm. This is Colorado rose quartz because we're right here uh, in the Rockies, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so I, I don't want to use Kentucky rose quartz. I do want to have Colorado rose quartz. And this helps <coughs> new people uh, who are new to Colorado who are trying to adjust to the frequencies. This is going to help them adjust better because this is a slice of Colorado right here. Mm-hmm. So Angie, there's a question um, from Gina. She wants to know, uh, what is the glowing energy? All right. So what we see glowing here, this is selenite. So these are long selenite rods. Oh, wow. On both sides. Selenite is the second highest naturally occurring frequency in the world. Mm -hmm. It's 244.5 megahertz. In metaphysical, spiritual realms, it is con uh, considered a bridge energy to the fifth dimension. So those people who are, who are, you know, anchored in the third dimension and starting to move now through fourth up into fifth dimensional consciousness, 
this is really going to support them. It's going to fill their auric field with, you know, uh, easy access into fifth dimensional consciousness. And what makes it glow is just some LED lights. The stones that are in here do not get fed photons from the sun. I can't get them to the sun. And so I'm using LEDs to feed them photons and charge them. Okay, beautiful. Wonderful. So they're also asking, do you lay on it? Yes. She's showing you what she yeah. is showing you right now for the people that are just jumping on. She's showing you the inside of this bed. Doesn't that look comfy? I could just totally get on this. And I'm noticing uh, that you have a lot of salt. Um, uh, yeah. Him Himalaya Himalayan lamps be in, in the room. Yeah. That's gorgeous. I love that. Right here, there's a whole band underneath here of heated Himalayan salt. Oh, rock on. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> nice. Himalayan salt um, helps create homost homostasis between mm -hmm. the positive and the negative ions. And most of us have far too much positive ions in our system from uh, from electronics and moving uh, elect. Uh, you know, motors and engines and all those things that move produce positive ions. Where we get negative ions from is like from the ocean, from waterfalls. Moving water will change the state. It'll flip an ion from positive to negative. That is correct. And ions by their nature want to have balance. They always want to mm -hmm. be paired, you know, one, one negative and one positive. Most of us have far too much positive. So... The other thing that creates negative ions is the Himalayan salt lamps right here. Mm -hmm. So um, so I also have them in the organ generator crystal bio bin. So I'm putting as much mineral and crystal technology as I can in here that is coordinated, works together harmonically like an orchestra. Okay, I could put too much in here and it creates chaos. So there's a lot of science into or understanding into what needs to go in here. So up here, we have green calcite and blue calcite. This has to do with um, our thinking processes, our brain, spinal cord, and supporting all of, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And in addition, mm -hmm. I've got rose. Uh, uh, every foot of blue kyanite. And what blue kyanite does is it cleans psychic imprints. So a lot of the people who come here to the Crystal Sanctum, which is what this room is called, um, are very aware and very psychic. And if I don't keep this bed self-cleaning, which is what the blue kyanite does, they can tell me all about the last person who laid on the bed, right? So the bed is uh, completely cleaned. All these crystals are completely cleaned between everybody so that they are blank. There's no human psychic imprints on any of it. And um, cleansing and purifying them helps with that. And the blue kyanite helps with that. Oh, that's fascinating. I love that. So one of the things that I, I want to talk about or that I want to bring up if we regard to the um, the salt, the Himalayan salt, there is literally in Palm Springs a Himalayan salt room. The studies behind what can happen when you put your feet into Himalayan salt is ridiculous i have had i interviewed leon hendrix inside this salt room it's a salt cave actually and it was so much fun just i can't even explain it and i'm sitting here thinking about my experience inside of the salt cave and how that that felt and imagining oh my gosh what it must be like in here to be in this room our bodies are made up of 102 minerals now, if our body is made up of 102 minerals, is it safe to consider that this is, it's really, this is a big reason why our cellular structure automatically reacts to the earth being the crystals? You, can we just, let's dive into that. 
So we are carbon-based beings. You know, this is basically a carbon-based being. And crystals, when they connect with us, they're like, oh, I recognize you. You're a liquid crystal, right? Mm -hmm. And their very nature, um, quartz crystals, very nature is to structure things into perfect, uh, into perfection. That's what crystals do the best. That's why we use them in all of our electronics. We wouldn't have electronics if we didn't have crystals. Uh, all of our big broadband um, energy, whether it's from batteries or you know coming through the electrical lines, is this very broad spectrum energy and it's wide and it's clumsy and lots of it falls out. If you've ever stood underneath high power tension lines with coins in your pocket, you probably have burn marks on your legs because it's it doesn't all stay in the line. A lot of it falls out. So what crystals do is they narrow it. They clean it up and they narrow the spectrum and they turn this big clumsy electricity that we make into uh, coordinated power. They're very good at it. And that's a very brunt use of them. It's, um, it's forced. That's a forced use. It's like beating a horse with a whip to make it go. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you work with a crystal, you know, if you can connect to the consciousness, the being that it is, develop a friendship, develop a relationship, you can work with them psychically. And that, that's like a gentle broke horse. That's a horse that actually wants to be with you. It's excited to see you. You're not the taskmaster with the whip anymore. Makes right? sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So crystals move energy. They absorb it. And they spiral it out their tip. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you put two crystals, the tip pointed at the end of another one you've created a very basic circuit. I don't have three hands, so I can't quite show you what I want to show you here, but I'll use my nose, okay? If I move my nose, I can feel that. Yep. I'm moving it into a stream of energy and back out again, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you coordinate a whole bunch of these, depending what the circuit is, you can create very strong effects. Beautiful. And they like to work together. And what I found over the years when I go to do a circuit, which you know may have 30 or 40 crystals in it, these crystals, which are very trained, um, <clears throat> I trained them to, to be able to adjust their energy instead of it just coming out the end and kind of spraying that they can find literally the next tip. Because sometimes they, they're having to, you know, change angles and stuff, and they need to be able to find the tip of the next crystal. Okay. What I find is, and they don't like to run energy counterclockwise. I learned that with them right away. They like to run circuits that go counterclockwise or that go clockwise. But there are certain crystal arrays for like deprogramming and, and reversing things that actually run counterclockwise. And the crystals don't like to run energy that way. They keep trying to change, they keep trying to change their circuit and move it out the other way, run mm -hmm. it backwards. And so I had to do a lot of training with them to be able to, you know, run it the way that I want them to run it. Right? Okay, I got it. Okay, so it, now, what I what I personally love about all of this is I've laid on a Viber sound bed that had a crystalline uh, lining in it that it, it was a water bed. So I'm sitting here looking at your bed going, uh, I really, really, really want to visit Colorado as soon as possible to get on this bed. I know firsthand what these types of beds and energies can do. I've never seen one this extensively put together with this kind. I mean, I noticed that even with you're using a carnelian and a carnelian is also for our sacral chakra. And I'm, I mean, the first thing that hit me was uh, cleaning uh, sexual trauma and, and all of that with using a carnelian in our sacral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you're using that ro that beautiful Colorado rose quartz, and that is for your heart chakra. That's going to cleanse. I mean, the, the rose quartz is love. Yes, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. 
So t tell us what it, what it, first off, how, are you able to take patients now? You are, yes? Oh, yes. Yeah. And I can project these arrays as well. And I do have, uh, you know, clients across the world that, you know, that can't actually come here. And so what I do is I actually do the array on myself. I'm laying on the bed mm -hmm. and, you know, they're on Zoom just like we are now. And I'm in theta state where I can project my project my energy and I'm basically bilocating to them mm -hmm. and bringing them that in energy experience. It's a little bit more complicated than that, all time and space. Well, actually, to tell you that, you know what, you know what, beautiful Reverend Angie, I'll tell you something. There are the most gorgeous studies that have all came out through the Monroe Institute that the and the CIA of all the work that they've been doing with remote viewing, with healing, with um, energy work, with tapping into their psychic abilities and things like that. This is literally stepping. This all just came out through the Monroe Institute recently where they've been doing some really big releasing of the studies that have been happening for a long time. So the fact that what you're saying to somebody is like, yes, this is, is this possible? I believe it is because I do, inter, I do distant energy work all the time. What she's talking about doing is amplified by about, oh, yeah. geez, I mean, you're going to go lay on a crystal bed and then, oh my word. And if anybody has any questions, just go read the book or go read about the hundredth monkey effect and check that out and explain. I have a, I have a fun story. Um, the Colorado University uh, side department actually ended up using this as a lab for a project. Oh, wow. Uh, they had me in, which was jumping into the future, getting certain information and bringing it back to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were doing, I think, two experiments a week. Uh, I was time jumping. And we we had to do it from here because the, it was a controlled environment. It was the only place we could get. Um, you know, in the lab, they had a quantum computer that was broken. It was taken apart. But that, you know, that core, that quantum core was causing time rifts. And every time I would jump to the lab on CU, I would get sucked into these time rifts and then I'd have to fight my way back again. And, and it just got ridiculous. And I was like, you guys don't have control, you know, of your lab. And, you know, as a, as a jumper, even people's emotions, like if there's been a spat in the, in the lab, it causes the weird densities in the space. And when you're, yeah. when you're traveling out of body as basically an etheric mist, you're very affected by different energy densities. Like when I talked about selenite being 244.5 megahertz, the highest, um, mm -hmm. second highest frequency, uh, from the natural kingdom, that's a great space to jump into. Um, mm -hmm. But when you have all kinds of other human emotions and stuff, that can be so messy. So we ended up doing all of that work from here because this was energetically stable and high frequency and it eased and smoothed the, the passage and the reentry from wherever it was I was going and coming from. Okay, that's fascinating. I love this. So one of the questions, and please bring your questions forward. I would love to love to ask them. Kelly uh, wants to know, can I lay my crystals on my bed around me and do this? You can lay your crystals, especially if you drop in um, to psychic space and allow your higher self or your angels and guides to direct you exactly where to have those points and how far to have the crystals and in what order, um, you can cause some neat effects. Uh, can you recreate this? No. This produces a measurable energy field. I have quantum physicists and shortwave radio operators and all kinds of electricians and stuff come here and tour it. And they're, they're just like, okay, you've, uh, you've really accomplished something here and you need to be very careful. So, which I won't make another one. Um, and I, I won't tell you everything that went into this either because it produces such a massive amount of energy that if you're not ready to be able to handle what that's going to attract, imagine um, an oasis in a desert, all life is gonna come to that water. And in this case, it's all dimensions. 
So there's, um, there's some levels of dealing with what this energy output does that a lot of people are not prepared to deal with. And in the Inner Passage Mystery School, which um, I'm the founder of the Inner Passage Mystery School, we actually have a group called the Protectorate. And they check in from wherever they are, Canada, the US, Colorado, and survey energetically the crystal sanctum, the outer sanctum, the sanctuary, the whole top of this building. We have it all set up in varying levels of grids. It's based on um, a temple, you know, with a, like the Holy of Holies, you know, the inner circle, the outer, the courtyard. And it, and so it, you step into higher and higher and higher and higher states of energy as you come inwards. And so they check all of that and they check the outflow and they check what's coming in. And I, you know, it's not appropriate for the show, but I could tell you some pretty crazy stories about what, what has happened here. Well, well, maybe we'll just do, we'll just do a different show and then we'll talk about that. Cause I love to know, I love good, good, juicy things that are, that are things that you don't hear normally. Um, Oh, Gina wants to know how much is this for remotes? How much is a remote session? Uh, for Crystal Array, it is $280 and that's two hours. And it includes a cleansing, a purifying, raising your frequency, a consult with your higher self to find out which array I'm going to do. Because remember, it's not just the Crystal Bio bed. There are people who come in here just delay on this, like they've had a really bad day at work, they take their lunch, they come here, and then they leave in a really great mood. But I'm also going to build a circuit on top of you, and that circuit is going to have to do specifically with what you need. And that could be, you know, health in your body, that could be the evolution of consciousness, that could be, you know, something that's happening in your mind. Um, and so we're going to consult with each other, and then we're going to consult with your higher self to find the perfect array that's going to accomplish the most for you and then you are you're in that array for quite a while it's a guided meditation which just gives the brain something to listen to so it doesn't get in the way of the energy and then you're you're taking a sauna and some really high powerful frequencies and that energy will last in your system nine or more days um each day you integrate it more though um, right. When you first come out of the array, you're just in an altered, beautiful, lovely state. Mm. It's just this is exciting. I'm I'm excited, and I'm looking at um, I'm looking at something on the the web your website. Ah, uh, shoot, it's giving me the wrong. Hold on a second. Let's try that again. Okay, so what I'm looking at here, and I just want everyone to see this, these are the testimonies, which you can go over and look at yourself, but I was just curious, and I know of life saved, wounds healed, mystery solved due to her ability. She has a great deal of talent that should be used in the service of others. Um, Arthur went, uh, Earl Sanders, I mean, this is just amazing. The Angie LaRue has opened my eyes and heart to the true potential of my soul and what it can do and who I really am. Her energy is full of love and bright lights and she's truly a mystical person. And I'm just excited right now to be sharing this. You all can go to the website and look at that further um, and take a look at the descriptions that she has of the bed. She also has, which is freaking awesome, the construction of the bed and different different uh photos of it which is so cool gina this is gina i love you so you can see uh you can see the energy through and yeah right and then um oh robert wants to know did, uh did anyone fall asleep on the bed in a session oh yeah you bet I, I'm I'm a lot of people, oh, yeah. there are there's two different levels of that robert there's uh, people who fall asleep and they're, they're really asleep you can tell by their pulse rate their breathing occasional snores whatever yeah and, but there's even more people that lose consciousness mm. they just go unconscious and they're they're out and about while their body gets refurbished and it's literally plumping up the cells in your body with energy and when the array ends and they come out of it they're just like I think I astral traveled for the first time. 
I, I definitely wasn't here. I was somewhere else. I, I would say, I'm going to tell you all, I know that this has to be true, and let me tell you why. My friend Penny was just over maybe a few weeks ago, and Penny brought with her a vibrosound bed. You guys, this was just this was a vibrosound bed. This was not this massive, incredible, I, I literally just want to jump through the screen right now to get onto that bed, because I literally, when you're going into these states of meditation this one was with uh jonathan and andy goldman's work that i did this meditation with and it just went zzzz. i started loving i mean i could feel myself lifting but i was right there in the bed it was the coolest thing ever so i'm just sitting here imagining what that has to feel like i've had experiences on beds that are kind of like it but nothing quite like this this is rad um, the question that uh, Kelly has is, does this help cancer survivors? What? So, oh, that's a good question. Let's talk about that. You know, I that's something I shouldn't say on air. I shouldn't say that in anything that can be recorded. Uh, the FDA does not. Um, that's okay. That's true. Can, uh, so let's just say, Kelly, uh, contact uh, Reverend Angie privately and you guys can talk about that. I will tell you that what I do know for a fact, that when I'm actively doing things like working with crystals and I'm actively doing other things and drinking my water, um, I know that I have the ability to heal my body. And I love that. So, but there, um, there you can yeah. read the testimonials. There are people that have claimed that it has made, yeah, made a huge difference, as I'm imagining for sure. And I, just from all of my experiences, I know that this is a, a thing and it's exciting as well. What's even more exciting is the fact that this is becoming more mainstream. You know, I mean, this is this is the wave of the future, everyone. You know, nobody, nobody, I was back in the day with, with, uh, um, pay phones, dial up phone, you know, rotary phones and then push button. We thought that was pretty amazing. Right. Do you guys remember? So now we're, you, you know, she's using the natural earth. This is the, the earth. I mean, this is the beauty of this, Angie, is that what I love about crystals is it comes from the earth and then and we're connected to our energy. This is based on a Lemurian, the technology that was in a Lemurian surgical theater. It's based on the same types of crystals laid out in the same, very similar ways. A few things have been changed, um, but this is actually really super ancient technology. And you can go to, I just gave, um, Debbie, the link, there's some of the crystal arrays that we've recorded. There's 12 of them. And for some extraordinary reason, digital technology carries the crystal and energies really well. Mm. And so there, there is on that link, if she shares it to whatever platform you're on, it's on my website under the shop button. There's 12 different crystal arrays. And you can read the descriptions. Um, there's about a paragraph for each one, but in the book, it's about two pages of information. So, but nobody wants to read two pages of information <laughs> for a crystal array, but it gives you an idea. Um, and they do work, you know, body, mind, and spirit level, and they're remarkable. And once you own a crystal array in that form, uh, you always have it and you can do, you can play it over and over. It doesn't lose potency. It's permanently recorded, much like an A-track tape or a cassette tape or Isn't that great? DVD or, yeah. Oh, for you, for all you out there that don't know what a cassette tape was or an A-track tape, it was the thing that, it was the thing that played the music back. We used to be able to even, re remember how exciting it was to actually be able to record on it? Oh, Ooh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know that there was crystal, there were crystals within those pieces of electricity or electronics as well? 
just like you said earlier, what an awesome thing when you really start thinking about it, you guys, the magic power that the earth has and how, Angie, how that you've brought the, the knowledge forward is just remarkable. Um, one of the, doo -doo 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 -doo, Gina says, I recently heard about our dreamless sleep, giving our soul like more nourishment than food gives us. Wouldn't that be awesome in a dreamless sleep on a crystal bed? What do you What do you have to say about that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it revitalizes the cells um, of our body. Let me show you a prototype that we built uh, before the crystal bio bed, and there's one other piece that were kind of the the high end of all of my research into Lemuria and Atlantean technologies. But I'll show you a prototype that was before the crystal bio bed when we were really testing the mineral uh, circuitry and which minerals worked with which ones and which uh -huh. one, you know, you could run, you know, one electron through and it would produce two or three coming out the other end. So I'll show you this. Okay. You guys, this is so much fun. It's crazy, right? I love this. Oh. Okay. So my mad scientist friend uh, who I made all of this stuff with uh, because he really understands the physics of it. He made these for me for my birthday and we call them uh, the gauntlets. Oh, okay. that's rad. So there's two of them and they're really kind of like a Cinderella. <laughs> they're crazy looking, right? Totally. Uh, they're kind of like a Cinderella slipper. So I'll put one on so you can see what it uh, does. And let me see if I can show you. Here, I don't know if you can really see. Here, I'm going to bring. I'm going to bring you all the way up. Okay, this is a main circuit that runs through this. Okay, and then it feeds that signal all the way through in here. So I'll put this on so that you can see it. Like I said, it's a prototype, so it's very rough. It's the only ones that ever existed. We did eventually intend to turn this into like a really nice recliner, but this cost $6,000 in raw material to build. And it took 14 to 16 hours a day for almost two months. It's a huge, huge product uh, project to build. Yeah, yeah. So we've just kind of like haven't got, I don't know how much further we'll get on. Uh, down the road, but this was the original one. So my hand goes in like that. Okay. okay. And so I'd put both of them on and then I would just rest with these on. And what this does is as my blood and the energy in my body runs through my arms, because it, it runs down your arm through your hand tips and it circles back up at, uh, I think it follows the outside of the arm going down the inside coming back up. And mm -hmm. so it's running it through this circuitry that's all in here. And as it does that, it is filling the cells with life force energy. So when they're kind of dented in and deflated and stuff, it boop, pops them back out again. Right. Oh my gosh. And so if I'll lay with these on for like an hour, it ends up kind of recycling everything in my body. And it's like, I could feel the energy in here, right? Right now, it's just an extraordinary feeling. I don't know how to describe it. It's like little golden lights that are tickling me, right? And mm -hmm. it's penetrating into my arm and into my skin. And my arm is starting to feel like, like there's peppermint inside. It's like this, um, you know, bright, fresh feeling inside right and then that's starting to be circulated up into my body now after about 30 minutes of wearing the gauntlets and i pull my hand out my hand feels uh very light almost like it's levitating mm -hmm. it's just extraordinary and so i don't know if you guys have heard about the med beds or not this is uh, extraterrestrial technology that will be coming out very soon the med beds are very close there's been i've heard a lot of reports about the med beds right so some of this technology that you're seeing here that i recovered from other epochs has a lot of similarities with the med beds 
And then with the Palladian codums that I do, there's a certain set of codums that are actually based on the Anunnaki med beds as well. So, yeah. General. I mean, uh, that's going to be, I, they've, according, tell, talk to us about these. What do you know about the med beds? Firsthand, not very much. I only know what I traveled out of body and gone and seen. And, uh, you know, I was actually, you know, far more drawn to things that I had past lives that were connected to, which is why I went back into the Lemurian and the Atlantean um, stuff. But there's a lot of similarities, you know, is my okay. understanding. At, at least, especially if I bring in the Palladian codums into that. So, but I can't tell you about the med beds specifically. Okay, I have not got to see one, or, and I haven't traveled out of body to go experience one. The They're close to being built, though. It, they might even be available for certain people. They are actually. Um, in fact, I'm going to bring this up really quick, you guys. Go to the Grateful Living Easing, this one right here on my website, which is spiritualitygonewild.com, and look at Grateful Living. And what you're going to see is if you go, if you scroll through Spiritually Raw inside, they have, there's a banner you can click on it to go and learn more about the actual med beds that she's talking about. I haven't seen the video. That's why I was asking. I just ran, I just put it into the book uh, and ran an ad. But you guys go check that out and watch for the brand new edition that's coming out um, because that's coming up very, very shortly. So back to this, uh, Robert wants to know how uh, approximately how many crystals are in that bed? Well, that's kind of hard to, to tell, isn't it? Several thousand, maybe. That's what I was kind of thinking. Yeah. Wow. The, oh my God. In the Lemurian amphitheaters, it was slabs of crystals, okay, mm -hmm. in layers, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I have them in the crystal bio bed in segments based on the area of the body that, you know, that particular crystal works best with. But the Lemurians had it in stacks like this. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I'm curious. I mean, what's coming up right now? I just, all of a sudden I, I picture Sedona. All of a sudden I got just pulled to, as you're talking, I, I'm just pulled to Sedona. Mm. How interesting. And, and they're just like, wow. Yeah. Right guys. Um, what's your experience with Sedona and the crystalline energy there? You know, I haven't been to Sedona since I awakened. Okay. Um, to, you know, to, to, to speak of it from that heightened awareness state. R right, but right. I, in my 20s and 30s, I was a rock climber. And I climbed, and that was back when there were no women rock climbers. I was the rarity, right? And I've climbed some of those spires. And I can tell you, even being unawakened, there was a phenomenal energy that comes off of the red rocks. There's something about the desert when spires rise out of the desert. Um, I don't know, it tracks a lot of energy. It centers energy, it pulls in energy and it projects it. Uh, even unawakened, I, you know, I can feel those effects of that. And I loved, I just love the red sandstone in particular. I, I do too. You know, inside inside of that is crystal. Mm -hmm. It's all crystal. And if you look, it looks like giant crystal cities. According to according to what they say there is that this was an Atlantic this was once an Atlantean city. That this was once I mean once an a crystalline city. And if you but I've seen the rocks, which you're not supposed to take. It just, just happened to know somebody that had one. Okay, I didn't take it. It's Chris. It literally is a gorgeous, uh, looks like citronite or um, selenite or citrine. 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 And it's cl it's clear almost. White, mm -hmm. white kind of clear. It's amazing. So you've got the, the red rock on the outside but inside is just pure crystal. Hmm. So oh. when I when I went to Sedona, but you're right, you could be anywhere. You could be just 
you know, not awakened whatsoever, you go to Sedona and feel the massive energy of this of this place. That's why it's so popular. Um, yes, Gina, oh, you do. Gina says she's got to go there for a trip. Yes, you do. Sedona is awesome. Um, Robert was thinking about incorporating crystals into clothing. Yeah. So that's a great idea. And, you know, we've really kind of looked at that as well. But the weight of carrying a lot of rocks around is going to preclude um, that from being a very successful line. So let me explain a little bit about a basic principle we're looking at with crystals. OK, so a crystal or mineral puts out a certain field of energy around it because it's grabbing energy from the environment. It's changing it to its frequency and it's putting it back out again. Okay. So this little guy has a field about like this. Okay. All around, all around it. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's definitely going to have some effect on me, right? But ultimately, I'm a liquid crystal. I put out a much larger field, right? So we know about auric fields and expanded auric fields. So eventually, my field is going to overwrite his information, okay? So that means in order to really take care of him, after he kind of gives me his signal for a while, I need to cleanse and purify him. I need to uh, wipe him clean of my energy, remove all my psychic imprints and my energy out, out of him and put him out in the sun and charge him up again with photons or the moon. You can use the moon as well. Um, it's a different type of charge I get. It's a much softer charge. So if people don't know how to do that, that's extremely important for the health of a crystal. All right. So it, an analogy might be having a pet and never feeding and watering it. You're not going to have the pet very long, right? And the same with a crystal, okay? And I've seen dead crystals. People have brought me crystals that maybe they went through a horrible breakup and they just held that crystal all the time. Please help me, please help me, right? Mm -hmm. And the crystal took as much as it can and it turned dark and then it cracked open, right? It died. So keeping our crystals safe and healthy is really important. And so like if you're looking at a clothing line, most people are not going to know how to care for the crystals. So, you know, that's going to be really great for a few months and then all the crystals are going to die. And the same thing with these biomaths and stuff. You know, people are miserable and unhappy and, uncom you know, and they go lay on it to feel better. And those crystals pick up all those energies. Mm -hmm. And then the next time they come lay on it, it has their energy plus that other pile of stuff they also dumped on it from the last time. You know, so there's a lot of knowledge in how to... You know, they're easier than, than, you know, watering plants and feeding pets and stuff because what they really need is just cleansed and sunned, you know. But you do yeah. take care of them regularly. Yeah. So. That's really I, – I love that you're bringing that up. I love that. And so everybody, charge your crystals. Get them, get them out there. Make them happy crystals. It, this has been a fascinating, fascinating uh, hour of – talking about energy and crystals and i'm i'm loving this okay so ellie is saying she charges her pocket rocks so she has some that she carries with her on a selenite plate every day yeah let's talk about the selenite uh for a minute because selenite is um and and how that we use that and also if you i have a selenite wand and what i also heard you talk about is going in a clockwise direction versus a counterclockwise uh, right. That's on circuitry when you're uh, putting multiple crystals uh, into into a row, into a design, into a circuit is when you have to be conscious of clockwise versus counterclockwise. OK. All right. So selenite. My God, isn't she fun, you guys? She's so much fun. Oh. Uh. All right, so this is a selenite wand. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Selenite has a moth's hardness of two, no, I think four, okay? That means you can scratch it with your thumb, 
okay? It's a very, very soft rock. It grows in striation, so it's all, all the atoms are lined up in just one way, and that allows light to penetrate it. <laughs> this is great. Okay, so this is uh, this is an ultraviolet pen, ultraviolet light. Okay, this is how quick selenite moves energy. Let's see if I can. I'm going to turn this on. Holy cow, can... that's rad! Oh yeah, that's cool. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. You yep. see that light going right through there? Yep. Yep. It's instantaneous. Now a quartz crystal, it's gonna spin it for just a second and there's gonna be a slight delay, okay? This is instantaneous. So when you're charging your pocket rocks on top of it, it's an instant charge, all right? And that charge that it's pulling through is going to be tempered to the frequency of selenite, which is 244.5. So you're putting a high frequency charge um, onto your crystals. Now, if you think about, how can I make an analogy? Okay. So this is red calcite and it has a very low frequency and I'm just going to make up a number, but um, we're going to say 28 Hertz, 244.5 megahertz. Okay, so yes, I can charge this with this, but I'm forcing it to be something it's not, right? Mm. All right, yeah. So you can do that, but please put them out in the sun sometimes and so, so that they can just relax in the sun and, and not be forced into a different frequency domain. So, Maybe a good analogy is, you know, when angels come down into the third dimension um, and they're, you know, whatever, fifth and sixth dimensional beings, the third dimension moves very slow and it's very heavy and it's very hard for them to be here. And they can only be here for short periods of time uh, because it's really kind of painful on them. Now, when we travel out of body and go to higher dimensions, we get the opposite effect. It is so light and it's so amazing and we get so charged and we're vibrating so fast. And then when we come back into these bodies again, we're not safe in the third dimension until we reintegrate. And when I used to hold uh, the priestess groups um, in this room, when we would come back from, you know, a trip somewhere in the universe, we would have to sit in this room 10 or 15 minutes because the walls were melting. Well, wasn't really melting, but everything was vibrating so fast that it looked like a fun house. It looked like a, a house right. of mirrors. And so we have to slow the vibration down uh, before we can get in a car and drive or navigate a staircase. So, you know, so that's kind of the differential we're looking at from something really high like selenite to something like this. So, you know, when it's when there's no sunshine and it's you know three days of rain and and et cetera et cetera by all means charge your crystals on selenite charge them on an organ generator right but when you can put them out in the sun so they can just be themselves and and refurbish themselves put them back in their natural state I mean, that makes sense. I was using selenite too, um, Ellie. So I kind of love that. I um, I haven't put mine out in the sun for a bit. Robert was curious. Um, so <laughs> that is true. He's come across dead crystals as well. And so he's curious, Can they, they can be resurre resurrected, he's saying. Can they be, he's asking. I have heard some pretty crazy stories. Um... In fact, one of my students in the school, uh, her boyfriend had some kind of cluster of crystals and um, I think they had a fight or a disagreement, something really heavy. And the crystal, which was sitting on the shelf, just suddenly all fell apart. Like it couldn't handle the energy charge of their fight and it just shattered, it broke apart. 
and he cleansed it, he purified it, he removed all the shock and the trauma from it, and and she was like, well, it's broken. We should just put it outside or something. He's like, no, it'll grow back together. And so he left it on the shelf and, you know, some months went by and he came back and he's like, oh, my crystal should probably be okay now. Do you still have it? And she's like, yeah, but it's still in pieces on the shelf. And he's like, well, when was the last time you looked at it? And she was like, well, I'm not really sure. And he's like, well, let's go see it. And it had pulled itself back together. Hmm. So... That's a pretty extraordinary story to me. So um, I don't know. They have, a, they have a whole secret world we don't understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, well, yeah. that's wonderful. So uh, I want to thank everybody. Uh, you have been a fabulous audience today. I'm going to post here one more time. So this is how that you are going to go to Crystal Arrays. And you can, you can actually get the recordings. And I love that big time because that's instant. You can also book a virtual session with Reverend Angie LaRue right now by going to that link. And if you are in the Boulder, Colorado area or in Colorado, or you're going to be visiting, I highly encourage you to book a in-person session. And I know Steve Weber is on his way to you this weekend, is it? I believe so. I think I'll be with him Monday. Right? I believe so. So Steve is going to try this bed out in person for Spirituality Gone Wild. And I'm excited about this. And we're going to hear all about how that that, uh, how that that experience goes. Because Steve will have you on and you guys will be talking about it. So watch for that to be coming on next week. And also check out all of the great shows on Spirituality Gone Wild. We love you, and if you want to get a hold of Reverend Angie, hit her up on crystalarrays.com. Angie, thank you so much. Once again, you've been extraordinary. Everyone, watch for Angie to be coming back again within just a couple of weeks. I love to have her back as much as possible because, Angie, quite frankly, I don't think I know anybody that is as, as much of an expert in crystal healing as you. You are definitely the number one period I've ever met. It's just absolutely amazing. And I've met a lot of people that do this kind of work. This you're extraordinary. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank all of you for joining us today. I loved your questions and it was so fun to interact with you. You're beautiful, bright lights. And thank you for being who you are. And Debbie, thank you for having me as a repeat guest on your beautiful show. Oh, I love having you. Absolutely. I love you all. Remember, go to spiritualitygonewild.com, join our Untamed Club, and make sure you check out the Grateful Living easing. There's freebies in there like Jonathan and Andy Goldman Sound Healing and Victoria Reynolds' book. You got to go check it out. David Strickle's Taya Boot Camp. There's other freebies in there too. His master class. You just got to go look and see. Bye. <laughs>